everyone, my name is Kyle. I just finished my PhD thesis at the Australian National University and Beijing International Centre for Mathematical Research this year. I wanted to give a series of lectures based on my PhD thesis, given that I want to, one, improve the manuscript and explore the ideas a lot more, but also to share the, the beautiful and rich subject of complex geometry and more specifically complex differential geometry that is probably not so well known or familiar to, to many in the mathematical community, let alone the more general mathematical community. In this series of lectures, I'm hoping to work through progressively the entire manuscript. It's a 365 page document at the moment, I believe. So it, this is definitely not going to be a short lecture series. It's definitely not going to be a lecture series that could be completed in a semester. I understand that the background implicitly required in the thesis is substantial. It covers algebraic geometry, differential geometry, uh, Ramanian geometry, algebraic topology, point set topology, complex analysis, and several variables, and, and a large number of other topics. But really, if you have done a first course in one variable complex analysis and point set topology, then that should be enough to get you through much of the content. I hope to add exercises and complementary material to further reference, let's say, other resources that you can delve into if you're not so comfortable with, for instance, sheaf cohomology. I remember that being a big hurdle for me. It took me a long time to understand that, but I would like a very thorough reading of the, of the thesis because I want it to become a very definitive reference. I want to have it so that it's very clear to read, it's very thorough, it's very comprehensive, and it's just a nice book to have on the shelf and a very useful book to have on the shelf. So. This is the first lecture. I'm going to be covering just the basics of the definition of a smooth manifold, of a topological and complex manifold. We won't get into much in this first one, but it will be the first in a series which I hope to update at least once a week. So that's enough chit chat. Uh, let's get into the content. What is the lecture series going to be about? It's going to be about primarily complex manifolds. So a complex manifold is in particular an example of a smooth manifold. So a smooth manifold is the content of typically a first or second course in differential geometry. And a smooth manifold is a topological space. So I will assume that everyone is familiar with the definition of a topological space and comfortable uh, with the material considered in, let's say, a standard first course in point set topology, treated in, for instance, the, the book by Moncrez. So it's a it's a topological space that is Hausdorff and is locally Euclidean. In the sense that if I take any point, let's say, so if I visualize my manifold as some space like this, I look at any point let's say P on my manifold, call the manifold M, then I can find an open neighborhood UP together with a homeomorphism which will map UP onto, let's say, VP, and this is in some Rn. And moreover, this homeomorphism, which we should call, let's say, phi p, sends uh, the point p to the origin in Rn. So a smooth manifold is a Hausdorff topological space, together with the following property that if we look, 
let's say down at our feet and we zoom in sufficiently far then the space that we're looking at or standing upon should be flat. It should be identified at least topologically with, with Rn. Now I haven't given the complete definition yet, so far all as I've specified is probably what we, you would call a topological manifold. Although manifold should be reserved for uh, manifolds that are at least smooth. And by C infinity, uh, smooth, I mean C infinity smooth, so infinitely many times continuously differentiable. Now, how do we impose some regularity constraint on the manifold? Well, this condition here, this local homeomorphism phi p, this, which is given for any point p on the manifold, this gives us a way of identifying the local neighborhood around a given point with a copy of Rn in which we have coordinates. Now, to make sure that these coordinates are well defined, we should look at overlaps. So for instance, if I was to take another neighborhood and I was to consider a separate neighborhood, let's say U tilde P, that would come with, let's say, a neighborhood, uh, a homeomorphism onto, onto Rn, which we would call, let's say, Phi P tilde, and then let's say that mapped to something like this, and there would be some overlap. This would be the overlap of VP together with VP tilde. Now, if we think about this, we look at the map which is defined on VP intersect VP tilde. So I can go to the pre image under VP tilde, VP tilde, which would give me this. And now I can then map it back to the corresponding open set in Rn via phi p. So this is via phi p tilde inverse. This is via the map phi p. And so I've now got a map from vp, vp tilde intersected to itself going this way and then this way. Now I could also realize the inverse of that map is simply phi p inverse phi p tilde. But the important thing to note here is that we have just defined a map from an open subset of Rn into an open subset of Rn. Now, as a consequence, the map given by phi p composed with phi p tilde inverse is a map between open subsets of Rn. So this is a map between open subsets of Rn. Now, for maps defined between open subsets of Rn, we have a meaningful calculus. So it, it makes sense to say that this map is differentiable because it's going to be differentiable just in the ordinary sense. We haven't hijacked anything uh, or we haven't introduced any new notion here. So what does that mean? Well, we can specify the regularity of a manifold by looking at the regularity of these maps. Okay, so how does one make this a little more precise, give a, a complete definition? We'll say that a, uh, a chart for a manifold M is a is an open set 
you in the manifold together with a homeomorphism from you into some subset, let's say V of Rn, some open subset. This is exactly the, the VP we saw before. So the VP and UP together would give you a chart centered at the point uh, P. Centering means exactly that it sends the point P in the manifold to the origin. It's called a chart because it gives you a way of pulling back coordinates and making sense of coordinates on, on the abstract manifold. So once we have a chart, we'll say that an atlas for the manifold M is a collection of charts So let's index them by U alpha, V alpha, such that the manifold is covered by these open sets U alpha. So I have an open covering by charts. And moreover, I can specify the regularity as before. So an atlas for a manifold M is a collection of charts such that the open sets cover the manifold. And we say that the, so let's call this atlas A. So we say that this atlas A is smooth if what? If the associated maps here which would be, let's say, V alpha inverse V beta. This would be defined on V alpha U alpha cap U beta. V alpha then sends it back onto the manifold. And then I apply V beta, which would send me to V beta U alpha cap U beta. Each of these are subsets, open subsets of Rn. And so we say that an atlas is smooth if these transition maps, so let me emphasize that terminology here, if these transition maps are smooth. So let's, let's understand that again. So a topological manifold is a topological space that is Hausdorff. The key point of Hausdorff is that you can make sense of calculus. You have uniqueness of limits in a Hausdorff space and non-Hausdorff spaces don't have a very well-behaved calculus at all. Now it's a topological space that is Hausdorff and locally Euclidean in the sense that every neighborhood has, or every point has an open neighborhood and a homeomorphism into Rn such that the idea is that we can, when we look down at our feet, if we're standing on the space, we're locally looking like Euclidean space. But we'll see that just because you locally look like Euclidean space uh, does not mean that you're globally anything like Euclidean space. The Earth is a good example, the Earth being spherical globally, but when I look down at my feet, it looks flat. Okay, so that specifies a topological manifold. But if we want to talk about calculus, we want to talk about things that are differentiable. To make sense of differentiable objects, we need some regularity. And the regularity is encoded in the atlas. So an atlas was a collection of charts, the charts being the local maps into Rn, such that 
the open sets cover the manifold and I can specify the regularity in terms of the transition maps remembering that the only notion of differentiability we have available to us is the standard one from our kindergarten calculus on Rn. So we, we define these maps which are just simply maps from open subsets of Rn and declare these to be smooth. So before ending this first short lecture, let's, let me tell you what a complex manifold is. So a complex manifold is in particular a smooth manifold as we remarked earlier. So we'll say it's a smooth manifold X. So what does that mean? That means there is a there's a smooth atlas let's say A specified by some collection of open sets U alpha and these homeomorphisms onto some subset of Rn phi alpha now we understood the smoothness requirement in terms of the transition maps phi beta phi alpha inverse which are maps between phi alpha u alpha beta to phi beta u alpha u beta each of these being subsets of Rn and we require this to be a smooth map Now, naturally, a complex manifold would be the, the analogue of this for Cn. So, what would a complex manifold be? Well, a complex manifold is a, it has an atlas, uh, it's a smooth manifold a smooth atlas, let's say A, of charts phi alpha u alpha to v alpha. The v alpha won't go into Rn this time, they will land in Cn, so there will be an open subset of Cn. And Moreover, these transition maps, which will be defined as before, this time between open subsets of Cn, we don't require it to be smooth, we require something more, we require it to be holomorphic. Now I'm not expecting the audience to be familiar with the notion of a function being holomorphic in several complex variables, that's the topic of a video that is soon to come, or a lecture that is soon to come, but one can think about it in a, uh, if you take a smooth function in many variables, in, in n variables, then it's actually holomorphic in each variable if and only if it is holomorphic as a function of several variables. That's uh, the fundamental theorem of Hartog, which I would encourage everyone to, to have a look at if they haven't seen it already. In my opinion, the best reference uh, for, the, for an introduction to several complex variables is given by uh, Boris Vladimirov uh, Shabat's book. which is translated from, from Russian. It's a very, very nice book. It's the book that I learnt the subject from and is the book that I suggest most often.